the Webb telescope is finding new and amazing things. So tell me, first of all, what an exoplanet is for those who do not know. Absolutely. An exoplanet is a planet around another star in the sky. And of course, you know, this is something that changed in my career as a scientist. When I first started, we thought there probably were other solar systems out there, but we never actually had proof of them. And, uh, and, and now we have proof of, of over you know, 5,000 planets that are going around the nearby stars in the sky. So when you look up in the sky, most of those stars have their own solar systems. So what did the web discover? Tell me about this planet. That's right. Well, so Webb is actually now beginning the search for exoplanets. Hubble did this. We also have a number of telescopes. There's one called TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which uh, finds about a thousand planets every year. And so, you know, the James Webb Telescope was launched you know, approximately a year ago. And of course, uh, it found one fairly quickly, but it has to go through the scientific publication process. And so we announced that uh, it had confirmed its first exoplanet. And uh, this is a planet which is, um, it's about the size of the Earth, but a little bit larger, something we call a super Earth. And these are planets that are maybe between like, you know, three to eight times the mass of the Earth. And that's kind of interesting because we do not have something like that in our own solar system. But when we look out into space, the most common planet we find so far are, are, are sort of that mass range of planets. And we think that there might be uh, almost these sort of water worlds, kind of these, these larger Earths with a rocky core, but huge oceans. Now we don't know that for sure, but one of the things that we're really looking forward to with the James Webb Space Telescope is that for the first time, we're actually gonna be able to look at what these atmospheres are like. Are the atmospheres like Earth? Does it have oxygen, water vapor, carbon dioxide? What's the temperature of the, of the atmosphere? So you know, we have a, a planet, the first one that Webb confirmed, we know of a lot more, and, uh, and now we're gonna delve deeper, try to figure out what these planets are like. So does this one have an atmosphere? This one we don't know yet. So, you know, right now, uh, Webb is actually looking at some of the atmospheres of, of nearby solar systems. There, there's one that I'm particularly looking forward to. There's a, there's a system called TRAPPIST-1. And TRAPPIST-1 has at least seven Earth-sized planets. There may be some farther out that we haven't detected yet. But we know of seven Earth-sized planets that are all going around very, very close to each other. And, and some of these are the right distance from the star to have about the same temperature as the Earth. And so, you know, seven chances in one solar system, one after another, to actually look at what the atmospheres are like. Um, what we need to do is wait for these results to go through the scientific review process. So these observations have largely already been taken, but now we're looking at them, making sure our colleagues agree. So uh, I hope that'll be coming out soon. Humans in general are always looking for those Earth-like planets. Is that why? Do you think that we all have this hope that there's another life out there? Well, I mean, I, I know that I sure do. I, I mean, I think most scientists do. I, I think, you know, it, it's sort of like the analogy of what I was saying, uh, you know, before we actually had proof of these exoplanets, you know, we would all sort of look at each other and say, yeah, I mean, if our star has planets, doesn't it make sense that other stars would have planets too. And, you know, we also say, hey, you know, so, you know, our planet has life. You know, there, there must be other planets out there that do. I mean, we, we estimate that the Milky Way galaxy probably has hundreds of billions of planets, just our galaxy. And of course, we know of many, many more galaxies out there, although you know, it's easier to find life a little bit closer to home. So the, um, the thing that I think Webb probably will do in the next few years is give us kind of this wonderful conundrum because it'll say, hey, look, there's a planet over there. And it's about the size of the Earth and the atmosphere is very much like the Earth. It has oxygen, carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor. And if you have all of those things, as far as we know, that's kind of hard to get without life. But it's not going to be a 100% proof. And so, you know, I imagine going out, you know, you, you could sort of show a, an amateur astronomy club, you could get the kids outside, you could show them a star through a telescope and say, that star has a planet around it that we think may have life. You know, but, but it's, it's kind of, you know, it's sort of sad that, you know, probably Webb will not be able to 100% confirm that. It's, um, it's certainly unlikely, but it's possible that we may see something like chlorophyll, you know, a molecule that is very hard to get, almost impossible to get without life. And um, we're even taking seriously the idea of something called a techno signature, a signature of technology. What, what if there's pollution? What if there's something in the atmosphere that shouldn't be there? You know, I mean, again, those scenarios are much less likely, but they're not impossible. Wow, that's fascinating to think about. Very cool. All right. So 